When we're looking at technology and when we're looking at research and science, then we have evolved so much. Yet, if we look at our personal lives, then we haven't actually come that far. And this is also the reason why we frequently turn back to old philosophies to help us out to guide us through our lives. And that's exactly what we're doing today. In today's video, we're covering another letter from Letters from a Stoic written by Seneca. And the main theme of today's video is going to be how to live a little bit more happy and a fulfilling life. But before we get straight to it, what's going on powerful people? My name is Benjamin and I welcome you to today's video. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting the subscribe button so you're not missing out on any future self-improvement, stoicism or philosophy in general. One more thing, a huge shout out to Ely Z, David Rose, Gary Mina, Aaron C and Kieran Broadley for continuously supporting me on Patreon. I truly appreciate it. But without further ado, let's actually get straight into the very first lesson from Seneca, which is wisdom makes a happy life. And according to Seneca, wisdom in itself has this power. But he also says wisdom is difficult to acquire. It is not something that you get by easily. You really have to work towards it. And he also says, well, if you can't have wisdom that easily, and if wisdom is the main thing that you need for a happy life, then the pursuit of wisdom is the thing that is going to make life bearable. If you're pursuing wisdom, knowledge, education, then this is the path also to happiness because wisdom in itself is the thing that is really going to give you a great sense of joy. And now if you set your life up just for the pursuit of wisdom, then you also need to keep lesson number two in mind. Don't make new resolutions, but keep old ones. Seneca says, the noblest, highest resolutions that we could have, all the fancy ideas of things that we wanna do are actually no good because we've already made so many resolutions and we should firstly try to accomplish these. We should firstly try to stick to these. If you constantly come up with new ideas that might actually feel great, you feel inspired to try out something new, to get into a new habit, to learn a new skill, to simply pursue a new goal. But Seneca says, hey, instead try to actually make fewer resolutions, but stick to those because that is the difficult part. We all know how easy it is to say on New Year's Eve, hey, next year everything is going to be different. But what makes the difference between a successful and happy individual and the opposite? Well, it's sticking to your resolutions, actually sticking things out. This could be as simple as watching a video on Stoicism every single Monday or the counterpart for me, producing a video on stoicism every single Monday. It's not necessarily something that I'm always looking forward to. Yes, most of the time I do in fact enjoy it. I like reading about philosophy, I like talking about it. Yet we all have those days where we just feel like not doing it. But this doesn't stop me. I have to stick to the resolution of just saying, okay, I made a commitment, I upload a video on stoicism every Monday. and this is what I'm doing. This is what I have been doing for the past month. So I'll keep it up. Lesson number three of today's video is to be self-critical. And this sounds incredibly easy. And sometimes we think we actually are self-critical, yet we are instead paralyzing ourselves because there are two versions. There's this obnoxious version of being self-critical where you just feel so overwhelmed, where you are just so self-conscious and self-critical that you feel like you can't do anything. You can't speak in front of a crowd because you know all the things that could happen, because you know all the flaws that you have, because all of this just makes you afraid. And you need to be very careful to not turn being self-critical into an emotional state, into the emotional state of fear. Instead, you should be self-critical in an objective and rational manner. Take a step back, look at yourself, look into the mirror, and really see what is going on. Don't just think everything is shit. Instead, really just nitpick and make an objective evaluation of what's actually going on. Often, you don't need to be afraid and that shouldn't be the goal of being self-critical. Being self-critical means you find mistakes and you work on them. That's a good thing. You don't need to feel bad for these mistakes. And if you go out and if you are afraid of something, then just Think of it as good practice. It will help you. The more often you speak in front of a crowd, the more often you speak in front of a camera, the better it will get. 
the easier it will get. So don't let your flaws paralyze you. Instead, take them objectively and try to practice and try to learn how to improve. Lesson number four is one of the most fundamental lessons that you can learn. And it is to understand what philosophy really is. And here we need to make a distinction between modern philosophy and the philosophy of ancient Stoicism, or in general, how philosophy was perceived back then. If you bring up philosophy in modern days, then people won't be very euphoric about it. They don't really want to talk about it because at the end of the day, what is philosophy today? It's on a very high level communicating about difficult questions that don't really have any practical applicability in our daily lives. It's just theoretical babbling around. But when Seneca lived, philosophy was actually quite different. Back in the days, philosophy was a lot broader. It wasn't just this theoretical talking about ethics. No, philosophy was a way of living. Philosophy told you how you should act, how you should behave yourself in certain situations. Philosophy taught you how you should have behaved when you made a mistake. Philosophy teaches you virtues that you should live up to. Philosophy has the power to guide you through your life, but only if you really understand it and seek it out. As we had in lesson one, you have to seek wisdom. You have to seek out philosophy and allow its guidance. Because if you never really think about these things, if you never really evaluated what values you really want to pursue, if you never really thought about different approaches to life, then how can you expect that you're living a good life, that you're living a happy life? If you've just run through your life like this and never looked left or right, then how on earth should you understand what living a good life actually is? If you've never seen a different perspective, if you've never understood the motivation of different people on why they do things, then how can you expect that you understand it. This is where philosophy and wisdom really intertwine, where they really play together. Not only understanding the general truth and facts about life, but also understanding the perspectives of every single individual might be incredibly beneficial because it just helps you to understand where they receive pleasure, where they think, hey, this is living a good life. If you just have your own perspective and your perspective is flawed, then you will never uncover this. But if you take a look at different people, if you take a look at all these older philosophies, at these ways of living, then you will eventually uncover, hey, the way I'm living my life is not necessarily the right one for me. Maybe there is actually a way that is more suitable for me. Maybe I shouldn't constantly be striving for productivity or Maybe I should actually be constantly striving for productivity. Maybe my highest goal actually is being competitive or maybe it is not being competitive. Instead, I wanna be in a good society and in a nice and friendly group of people. There are always different perspectives on what actually is important in life. And if you've never looked into these, then how can you know that your perspective is the right one? If you find the right philosophy, then this philosophy will order your life. It will give structure to your life. You will have goals. You will achieve these goals. You will also know what to do, when, where, how, and why. And only if you know why you're doing the things that you're doing, only then will you truly feel like you're having an impact. And only then you will get this slight sense of having meaning. Otherwise, it will be incredibly difficult. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd highly appreciate if you click that like button for me. I have two more videos for you right here. Subscribe button up there. Another huge shout out to Eli Z, David Rose, Gary Minar, Aaron C and Kieran Broadley for supporting me on Patreon. I wish you a wonderful day and I will be seeing you in the very next video.